Not yet, Henrik. Not, not yet. Hush. Wait. Wait. Not quite there yet. Still waiting. Okay, now we can start. So, uh, I wanted to wait for 30 seconds so that... <laughs> So everyone has fucked off, which is the, <laughs> that's the average engagement time on YouTube for 99% of so-called listeners. So everybody fucking off actually might be a sort of a blessing in for, for today's episode, <laughs> at least if all Finnish listeners have fucked off. Yeah. Since we are touching upon a Finnish action film and it's always, always kind of a kind of a soft spot. In this episode of the Flick Lab International Film Podcast, indeed, Kari and Henrik discuss Sisu, the Finnish movie, making pretty big waves internationally right now, and it's essentially the culmination of decades of marketing of Finnish exceptionalism. I don't know what Henrik aims to find out with this film and what he's going to do with this material, but I am here to find out whether the Finnish international uh, ego wrapping, in a lack of a better term, has gone too far, or if this is a completely factual account on Finnish fortitude and strength. So please don't go away, we'll be right back. They're just ain't winning with some of the episodes. No, especially when we're talking about Finnish cinema. This podcast just comes up with creative ways of getting Henrik off the Finnish work marketplace. <laughs> Bridges are burning and pretty fast. <laughs> today, perhaps faster than previously, because today we are actually in a film that, that is pretty recent, is actually really highly praised and has a workforce behind it that are still on the field. So unlike with, you know, our, our previous ventures into into age old versions of the un unknown soldier, today I actually finally might land myself into some of the blacklists. Well, that's okay, because if you are following us on YouTube, you know the drill, you can subscribe and hit the bell, or you can follow us on your favorite podcast player. But if you're not on the internet, somehow, Henrik will sell you audio cassettes for five euros a piece. <laughs> the rent is due, and I'm kind of desperate. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I suppose there's a bunch of people related to this, to this project that you might already know personally not this one mm -hmm. luckily <laughs> I, i'm not yet bad mouthing from people uh, about about people i know or who i may be friends with so for today's episode there yet is not that obsessive need for me to cover up my own ass or that you know these guys are my friends bias um Speaking of bias, I'm really trying to be really straightforward today and really try to get the words somehow uh, out of my heart. I don't I don't want to I don't want to make fun for the sake of fun here, which is sometimes fun, but we are talking about a film that is directed by somebody that we have already discussed before shortly. Jalmari Helander. We were talking about his uh, help me out here. Rare Exports film. Rare Exports. A while yeah, back. Which we was covered in the Christmas episode. Yeah. And that movie was about an evil version of Father Christmas. And that made also some waves. And uh, 
in terms of exposure around the world. And he also did the big game. Somehow got Samuel L. Jackson to star in it. And I do recall he really wanted to be in that role. And that's how they got him. But I could be wrong. I mean, this is a guy who can name any paycheck in the world, really, I, I suppose. So I think this was kind of a thing that he really wanted to do. Yeah. Then again, uh, Al Jackson wasn't the only big name in in Big Game. There was also Ted Levine and was it Roy Winston or who was... Yeah, I, I have to co correct myself. It was Ray Stevenson. And also Victor Garber post alias fa TV show fame. So there was like Big Game, perhaps, when it comes to Hellander's filmography, Big Game is the one that has the largest and biggest global mainstream cast in it. Yeah, yeah, it's about a president whose plane crashes in the Finnish Lapland region, and he's got to survive with this kid who tries to protect the president. I kind of see Big Game as, or Jalmari Jalmar Helander as a director for me is the one that perhaps most of the Finnish directors really wants to push himself into the global market and especially the American market. And in my opinion, Helander also perhaps is the director that has, is, is best honed to make that attempt. Mm. He's, he's not not the you know the only Finnish director who works out there in the big world. He's also not the only Finnish director who works you know in in American market. But I would say that after Renny Renny Harlin, Helander might be the best suited for the task of being our Finnish director out there in U.S. Finland's uh, Rambo number one fan. Helander and this film, this his latest attempt, Sisu. So this is a full-blown, full full-length film that is making rounds around the world, and uh, somehow he got Lionsgate and all these big producer names to support his project. Uh, it's getting comments. This film, such as like Tom Miller blows away any limits of what makes a cinematic badass and makes and becomes the latest symbol for the undying fight against fascist scum. But there is also a bit of a split online. Mostly it's very positive when it's positive, but there's also the naysayers there. And I guess we're gonna find out in more in which camp we might fall into, if we can say that tonight. But yeah, can you give us kind of like an overview of what this movie is about? Basically it's just one old dude try to make his way to the city of Rovaniemi. That essentially is, is this movie. And when it comes to, you know, depicting that trip, it's actually pretty accurate. Because, you know, as, as someone who also also travels to, to Rovaniemi region, I can I can vouch for like that's that's what, what it's like. Yeah. Every single time. No no civilization. A bunch of blown up gas stations. Yeah, so Henrik studies master of artsiness so to speak in the university of lapland so you are gonna officially living there even though you are kind of a vagabond and all over the place but um, the title of the film sisu this is a finnish word and according to the beginning of the film and the text there it says that it's a finnish word that cannot be translated and it means a white knuckled form of courage and unimaginable determination, end quote. Before I go there, let's hear your thoughts. Well, I do think that it's, it's pretty accurate. Mm. Sisu is, is a certain type of dumbfounded stubbornness and like borderline complete stupidity <laughs> in, in the form of just like refusing to do anything else than what you have been doing previously. It, it's kind of like, you know, you know, the definition of insanity. D doing the same shit and just expecting a different outcome. Sisu is kind of that, with the exception that there actually is a chance that this might, it might work out. 
Yeah, that's what I kind of translated Sisu in my notes. Something like uh, insane fortitude or insane determination. Something like that. But I've taken the note of in the manner how the word Sisu has become, in my view, kind of like a Finnish cultural export in my very anecdotal evidence in the last 15 years or so. And I've been kind of dumbfounded how this comes about sometimes. And maybe it's about the Finns themselves, because, well, if we go into the whole deep end, when I've been living abroad, I've also taken some notes on how there are certain countries that care really deeply about what other people think about them, and some of the countries don't really do that. But Finland is definitely the former. They, I think our people tend to care deeply what people think about them. And we 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 want to say that we don't give a shit, but then again, we get weirdly offended whenever somebody else says something bad about Finland, or even when a Finn says something bad about Finland. Right. It's, it seems it, it's, that... it's I I'm not saying that it's hypocrisy in any way. It's just a really weird way of not giving a shit. <laughs> yeah, it seems to it seems that it matters to world to many Finns what other people might be conversing about them and then they'll you go to any comment section online about something Finnish and there's always that Finn and they'll be passionately telling you when you are wrong, when you're getting your facts wrong, they're there to there to correct you. Your friendly neighborhood Finnish person. And then there's the things like Conan O'Brien or someone of any magnitude who Ooh, wants to shit, yeah, the Conan O'Brien Oh yeah, cross that was cringe. That that was cringe. We we dragged it on into a presidential debate for fuck's sake. Like the Conan O'Brien mentioned Finland in his program question. It's it was a bit awkward. Also, as much as it was fun, it was also awkward in a sense that we just kept on building that. We we made it happen. Yeah, so many Finns are over the moon about things like that, but. However, I feel I don't identify very strongly with that kind of a group much. Because, for example, as a kid, I, I was watching the NHL, and I was then already heavily criticizing the Finnish sports news, the way of them concentrating on reporting on, on the minuscule achievements of the Finns on the ice. And actually, I wanted to know about everyone equally. So I could never understand that, really, because... Some of those achievements were really meaningless, and they would be giving like huge headlines for that when you you are in the sa same team with somebody like Yaramir Yager. Like, come on, there's other things to write about. Well, anyway, maybe I kind of almost held a crutch towards these Finns who care so deeply about Finns on ice. I I kind of think that anyone who has been listening to our past Finland movie episodes in <laughs> in the podcast. Already kind of knows that we don't care too deeply about, you know, protecting and saving <laughs> the, the Finnish, Finnish national self-image. Kind of like a running punch, punching back every single time that we talk about Finnish movies. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, after a while, it's unhealthy, it's unfair. And this kind of indirectly ties to into my experience of the Finnish cultural export. So when there's a word like Sisu that becomes some, somehow known around the world and a Finnish person tells to the interviewer that it's a word you can't translate. I kind of cringe because it, it's not because of the content of what he's saying. Maybe that's true, some, sometimes a bit tricky to translate, I don't know, but it's often the, the way that they say that with a sort of a sardonic voice. So there's this. Yeah, the vo voice is like, like I'm. I'm all for the statement. Yeah, and I I do think that you know, Sisu, when it comes to you know national, unphysical, cultural export, Sisu actually is not a bad bad export. I do think that mm. Sisu as a concept says a lot about Finns, and it's something that we can, in my opinion. Clearly say to everybody else that we, we have Sisu and that you can't translate it. It's this kind of a deeper 
emotional psychological force that kinda is is typical for Finns, at least in some capacity. But then, like like you said, there is this sardonic tone that everybody always takes. Yeah. And that perhaps is a bit too much. And I would probably challenge a few things that you just said there. Yeah, we have that kind of a never give up mentality sometimes. But there are, there are some things we could start to break down there. Um, yeah, these kind of interviews, they might be sometimes a little off-putting and cringy. In a way, it's easy to translate, as we said, it's kind of fortitude or perseverance. It's a pretty good translation. There's a little extra dim- dimension to it, like it, I think you said it pretty well, that it's some sort of a insane level of perseverance or fortitude or strength against adversities. Finns like to think that it's hard to translate because they believe the Finnish fortitude and perseverance is something of a special force in our country, that there are about 200 countries around the world, and apparently the only citizens of one country have this insane levels of perseverance, not known anywhere else on the planet. I I get this vibe a little bit. Uh, So in that sense, Sisu, it's also like a matter of international masculine, in lack of a better term, dick-waving. It's like, Sisu can be also translated in a toxic masculinity. In a way, yeah. Uh, in a way, it's not completely unfounded critique of Sisu. Yeah. There are aspects of to- toxic masculinity that go into the whole whole concept, the whole I- core idea of Sisu. And quite often also, like like keeping with the theme, when it, when it comes to Sisu, when it comes to advocating for Sisu, Quite often it's actually Finnish men who are all about the goddamn Sisu. Yeah. Well, anyway, all this rambling leads me to the point that I want to say that the leading introductory text of this movie about the word Sisu being untranslatable, it's it's kind of correct, but it, at the same time I feel that it's intentionally misleading. It's, I, I, I don't know if, if it's misleading, not necessarily but it is the term and it's the term's definition most definitely packed in a way or or packed into a package that has been meant to be be sold outside of Finland oh yeah like it's framed like, like the way how it's worded it's obviously word, worded in a way that it's meant to be imported. The definition that the film gives for the term Sisu is is meant to be imported outside of Finland. Yeah. One factor that kind of plays into this is the, the, the film is mostly in English language. So it's obvious that this is for foreign market in mind. And that kind of comes off with... from That's kind of emanating from a lot of Finnish films of late of the last... 25 years roughly something like that in the 90s i felt that there was kind of a change in the industry sure we always want to be you know seen we want to you know export our products and all that but i i I feel that there was a bit of a hollywoodization of our cinema if we can if, if you can actually say that we have a Cinema, cinema. If you if you understand the term cinema of some country, like Finnish cinema, Estonian cinema, whatever, if you understand that term in the way of that there would be some kind of a cohesive quality about the cinema that we do, well, perhaps you could say that it started in the 90s, but too bad that it's often way too Americanized what we do. Well, for, for me, when it comes to Finnish cinema... And uh, this is the moment where we have to also acknowledge the fact that Sisu is a Finnish action movie. Because Finland has got a spotty record when it comes to making action movies. Depending on how you count them, uh, Finland has been trying to do action. Well, it, it, well like I said, depends on how you count them. Uh, perhaps even as <clears throat> as far as from the 50s, when we had Villi Pohjola. Never made it outside of Finnish markets, and it was more of a some type of a weird low fantasy western movie, but it most definitely had action movie end climax 
it did have like action movie-esque components in it. So I'm kind of like willing to count it into, into action movies. We also have Hopea Rajantaka. Remember roughly translates in something like Silver from Across the Border from 1964. Which I would say most definitely is a Finnish attempt to, to do an action movie. But you mentioned the 90s. And 90s, I would say, when it comes to the, the Finnish cinema field, is the time period when we kind of went crazy. Or, or we, we made a lot of attempts to... And made a lot of experimentation on, on different genres. 90s is the time period when, like you said, Finland really started to Americanize its cinematic lang- lang- language. Mm. And we started to toy with more seriously with genres like like horror films, action movies. We, we tried to break out kind of the Finnish cinema tried to break out from the from the mode of uh, just you know making Finnish drama. Mm. And it did not succeed. Like you can you can try to watch some of that stuff with nostalgia gog- goggles and with uh, through those you know see something in in those attempts. But something like for example the Stones of Romanov from 1993, which is unbelievable cringe. Like that's and and following those attempts, the Finnish cinema kind of gave up and and acknowledged. Depending on your count, the first or for the second time that action movies and horror films just ain't in our wheelhouse, and we just should just you know save us from the further embarrassment. And following that, from early 2000s, well, we did, they did have Sona and Jade Warrior. I would say from 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 2000s early 2010s. The Finnish cinema landscape kind of once again closed I- in on itself and went back into doing what we have managed to kind of do before the best, which is Finnish drama movies. And now I have once again seen, now in early 2020s, I've seen the kind of the resurgence of mm-hmm. uh, Finnish experimentalism. And cinematic experimentation, which is like in in action movie field, that is Sisu. It was also the big game. Uh, it was also big game. And then we have also now ex- uh, stronger experimentation on the field of horror. Perhaps also coming up science fiction movies. And that's kind of like that's the the in my opinion. It's the cinematic cultural narrative mm. in which Sisu now plays the the latest chapter. Yeah, I've been reading about these weird projects, which seem at least on the surface really weird and kind of forced and heavily Amer- Americanized projects, such as Aku Louhimies, uh, film from 2021, Omerta 612, Attack on Finland. I haven't seen it. Uh, neither one, n- neither have I. I Honestly, I was going to see it. But then I just didn't get my ass into theaters in time before the reviews hit. <laughs> and I read those. <laughs> oh my god. I haven't seen it today. I also haven't checked out Finland tries to do Marvel, the movie, also known as Rendell. Oh, yeah. Which is now getting its sequel. I I don't believe that genres like action and horror are somehow completely out of our grasps. That no. Finla- Finland and Finns just can't make a f- workable action movie. Or they just can't craft, the, you know, how to make a horror film. And the fact that our road with action and horror has been so rocky, and it has led us into well, not really trying too many times to make an action or horror films, and has forced us to lean so extremely heavily into drama. I also think that that also is kind of counterproductive. And I'm, therefore, I'm really happy that, you know, 
Finnish action movies get made, even though I may not always side with the film that just, well, happened to come out th- this time. There's a deeper problem f- in Finns that has prevented us from cracking the action movie code. But I do think that that is crackable, and I do think that Finland should crack it. Yeah. Because goddamn, you know, you you can make an action movie in Finland. It's not a lost game. By all means, by all means. But it's a hard game. And I do do understand that you want to please the mass market. You have very little money. You have that precious, precious money that you might also get from the government grants to do your project. And sure, it might be very hard to strive for originality in this situation. But God, I hope we get there. Yeah. And on that note, you know, spoilers ahead for about for my opinions. But I do <laughs> think that Sisu actually manages to make a pretty noticeable effort. Okay. It's not a perfect film, but in my opinion, it la- makes the landing yeah. pretty damn well. Well, we've been kind of criticizing aspects about Finnish films now for quite a while, but that may not be the perfect reflection of what's about to come, yeah. But let's get on with Sisu now. Do you want to maybe start from the beginning? The We have the animated map intro here first. Yeah, which... Uh, that um, animated map introduction, which quickly goes... Extremely quickly. ...the situation. Extremely quickly. Which does become problematic. Um, this was... Later on. This was kind of a nail-biting situation for me, watching just this goddamn intro. I will tell you why. Well, it, as you said, it's extremely short. It's an ex- extremely short history lesson on the foundation of the story or the or the background of the what's going on here perhaps the the biggest surprise of the movie for me and how it doesn't talk about winter war in any way in this introduction to, no to to this day like the winter war it's the easiest way to if you want to acquire points abroad for Finns now that Nokia is no longer Finnish you know you talk about winter war but Later in the movie, we get some quick passing mentions about Winter War, but it never gets into anything notable. And I think there is a reason why the film avoids mentioning the Winter War too much. But it could also pose a dangerous problem here for someone in the audience if they don't know anything about Finland and Finnish wars or wars involving Finland. So it does. Yeah, because because the Winter War was ignored in the introduction, then it might pose the chance that the audience might have follow-up questions like, oh, oh, why are the Nazis on the Finnish soil? Uh, uh, Yep. And it says that something about like Russia demanding that Nazis are now supposed to be disposed with or pushed out of the country. But then that doesn't inform the audience of whether also Finns were willing to do that. or Now it just comes off as if Big Mother Russia told Finland that they must push the Nazis out. And then you might as an audience feel like, oh, so Finns, they are kind of Nazi sympathizers. That kind of is, is the danger that might happen when it comes to audience perspectives. Again, my, my problem with the, with the opening altogether is, and it's kind of a sim- similar type of problem that rose up when it came to the definition of the word Sisu, which is that if you look at it closely, you actually notice that in the words they use when they describe the situation, the film kind of makes it certain that it avoids mentioning some aspects of the situation. Winter War is not mentioned, because if you would mention Winter War, you would kinda also have to mention the fact that the continuation war went tits up for Finland. Mm. That's that's the way how, how you, you know, ended up with the whole push the Nazis out of, out of Finland. And the second thing that the film, it never denies this, but it makes damn certain that it never actually mentions it, and it makes damn certain to kind of visually paint 
the Nazis as as ugly, as dirty, as subhuman as possible. This way dri driving a wedge, bit, uh, wedge in, in the cinematic language of the movie between the Nazis and the Finnish characters. So that nobody would actually get the whole idea that yeah, Finland was sided with the crowds during the, the Second World War. And there was at least some Nazi sympathetic viewpoints and ideas going in Finland during the time period. Mm. And there was the whole whole spark of eugenics that happened in, in Finnish philosophy and idealism during the t time period. And like, like I said, the film never, never, it, it doesn't deny that these thing, things didn't happen. And in, in the film's defense, it's not really like it's a it's an easy going fun action movie so it's not required really sisu is not a deep examination hmm. of, of of 1940s finland and therefore you know granted it doesn't really need to have the whole conversation about what was going on in finland ideals wise during the time period but you also kind of notice that the film does all it can to avoid actually mentioning those aspects. And they still do kind of tie into the situation at hand. Mm. I felt that the Nazis were actually some of the softest Nazis that I've seen put on film in a while. Like, they were exceptionally kind in this film. <laughs> like, re really thoughtful and kind-hearted compared to most of the Nazis I see on screen. Like the, the leading Nazi, he seems to have a lot of understanding in his eyes at moments, in his performance, and almost as if, if he were a heartwarming blue-eyed Finn actually there, but yeah, he's actually a Norwegian actor, but has a bit of that, that Mads Mikkelsen vibe from Denmark there about his aura in my opinion, but yeah. For someone who is a Finn watching these characters, it will be pretty darn obvious that some of the Nazis are played by Finns by just looking at their faces and behavior and 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 voice. Was there like a Finnish <laughs> Nazi voices there? I'm not sure. It's quite well. About... Only Tommila, who is part of the tank crew, he's the yeah the the guy that Axel Henius Nazi leader shoot at the, the airstrip at the very end of the film. Spoilers, barely speaking in the film. Uh, barely speaking. But he's, he's like one of the, the few few Finnish actor mates to get got, got a line in this film moments. And most definitely, you know, he's, he, he does still count as a, as a talking Nazi in this film. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised perhaps about the, the slowness of the movie relatively. When I look at the film, perhaps apart from the locations, there isn't anything new to offer. Like, the quality of this country's films, I often feel like it's, it's, it's measured on how closely it can emulate some actionish beats of Hollywood. But okay, this was a little bit slower than you'd maybe expect. I don't know, on, on my end, I, it, I felt that it was actually surprisingly fast moving. Um, not necessarily when compared to the action extravaganza, which can be American Hollywood film, not also when it comes to Helander's own filmography. Like, his, his very first short film, something like Maximilian Tarzan, did work faster than Sisu. And the action was faster than what, what it is in Sisu. But I still felt that like, if, if you would take this and compare this against something like The Stones of Romanov, this moves really fast. It's almost lightning speed when you compare it to, to Stones. And I do think that the pace still, when it comes to the action and, and how fast the film is, how quickly you get into the next action set piece, I do think it's pretty damn, damn good still. And I also felt that the action set pieces here were actually some of the more inventive moments that I have seen in action cinema for quite some time. Okay. I was well, positively blown away by the action in Sisu. Okay, for, for me, 
the feeling of slowness must be coming from from me just feeling that I can pretty much predict where this is going, what this guy is all about. We know that in the, the first minute, basically. But I, I do, of course, recognize that it's unavoidable to to have this kind of a beats in, in, in the film and but the the chosen misons and the, the whole setting of the film that's that's the that's the big part that kind of separates it from your average film but otherwise i felt that while it's not completely predictable in the action beats it is extremely predictable in everything else and everything else there is actually there is nothing going on there it is just this guy against the nazis it's a movie that wants the audience to have fun and that that's about it this is not a story driven movie no in any, no no in any way the, the producer if i remember correctly it's the producer of the film who went and said that when they were actually like defining the, the pre production set uh, setup for this film they decided that absolutely every psychological and deeper aspect when it comes to the film and when it comes to, especially when it comes to its main character, Atami Korpi, they would be all removed from Sisu and, and from Atami. Like, this is meant to be, they, they, they wanted to make mm. as clean slate, as plain action movie as possible, story-wise. And the, the sole focus here is just on on the action and on the carnage yeah there's, there's just these certain action cliches that kind of amp up to the audience very conspicuously that the fact that our lead character is a badass and then by extension Finns are also badasses and I, and I I would not have this connotation this this connection with the these two facts but the fact that the director decides to use the word Sisu as, as kind of the, the rapper in this movie. Well, there's there's a moment in the truck where this Finnish prisoner lady is explaining how this guy can't be beaten and he's basically superhuman and unkillable killing machine. So he's basically now the, the Finnish equivalent of a, of a Rambo or Chuck Norris or... But in, in a way, in a way where the entire national identity is now tied to this guy's persona because i i feel that they're tying his persona uh to the to the finnish identity because they're using the word sisu in the film style otherwise it, they, he would have been just another action man they most definitely are and that's something that and that's a sentiment that is backed by director's own words yeah who has stated that Sisu is is meant to be an ode, not just action films, which he pointed out. This is this is meant to be an ode to the eighties action movies. He uses as, as an example the first Rambo film, First Blood. The problem there is that First Blood also has the societal critique. So I would say this is more closely to to First Blood Part Two. On top of that, Sisu is also meant to be an ode to a Finnish man. And that's where my personal problems with the film kind of starts. That's why I it, it hit my ears so heavily when the film refused to mention the, the previous st- uh, stages of the situation. What, what's going on in Finland, Russia and Germany-wise you know, during the 40s, and all, all of that. And why also some aspects of of Atami Korpi kinda, kinda sticks, sticked out so heavily for me. Mm. And it's all, all because, you know, that one statement from the director that this is meant to be an ode to a Finnish man. <laughs> and she's so, so, like, that's a whole can of worms. It kind of plays on with this idea that that a Finnish man, like we have been griping about the Sisu now for some time, and uh, or, or the term Sisu, and Atami Korpi, in my opinion, is something that that like a typical Finnish man wants to see himself as. Mm. 
the character itself is a is a one type of national fantasy, oftentimes shared by the men in Finland. And like, you know, fantasy is one thing. And when it comes to Adam and Corby, there are aspects that I do champion in Finnish man, like for example, not saying a goddamn thing for the entire time and just staying close to lipped, never giving up and, you know, just doing whatever it takes to get the job done. All, all well and good, but that's not, that's not a Finnish man, not really, that's not the Finnish man you actually meet in, in internet forums or, or you know, your, your local fast food station, the snackery at <laughs> 2 a.m. The Finnish man acts like Atami Korpi, and then when you finally, when he finally has a fight, all of a sudden he summons two or three of his friends, and if you manage to take them out, then he goes and cr- goes to cry to the local cops, and then you have the whole situation at, in your hands. So, like, like Atami Korpi is is not an ode to a Finnish man. <laughs> It's more like idealism. It's the Finnish man's ideal Finnish man, Atomic Corp. Yeah, yeah. And to, to a point, I, I have to credit the film. Even the film kind of can't can't stick true to the idea that Atomic Corp is some type of like your average everyday Finnish man. No, even in the, in the film's context, Atomic Corp is not a Finnish man. He's the Finnish man. He's this mythical beast. Which comes up in, in his backstory, where it's pointed out that Atami Korpi was just too much man for the cuckolds in charge of Finnish army. He's the one-man death squad. The entire army just couldn't put him in the line, so they set him out, to, out there all by himself. And he killed the entire Red Army, or some shit like that. So even in the context of the movie... Atami Korpi is, is a mythical presentation of some type of an idea of a Finnish man, but in in the world of Sisu, Atami Korpi is not a traditional Finnish man. The film even visually points this out to you at the very end of the movie when you have, you know, the, the Finnish ba- battalion of, of you, know, you know, your everyday cocked soldiers who took no part in maiming the Nazis, mm. who who have their clean haircuts and everything, all, all, all of that, you know, in instead of the rocket outlook of out Atami Korpi, that's where you see a group of Finnish men. And they did jack shit throughout the film. The only acting Finnish man in the movie is is some type of a a go, ghostly a ghostly idea that is embodied in Atami Korpi. So that's why there's your old. Maybe my idea of what is Americanization, what is American cinema and how it uh, leaks into foreign cinema, then it may be a little bit wrong how I approach this. Am I being overly har- harsh towards the film? Because I feel that the movie is borrowing a lot from Hollywood. Truthfully, there's so many countries nowadays doing this type of similar type of a violent action revenge movies that at this stage of the game it might be actually lazy to call this movie inspired precisely by Hollywood. This is now all over the globe, this phenomena of of making a certain kind of action. But those elements that are being used are certainly not original. And in today's terms maybe it's more correct to say that they're not borrowed from Hollywood, but the film, it definitely borrows them. Yeah, I don't know about that. Like, I, when I watched this, this movie, two things that popped out in, into my mind was precisely First Blood Part 2, especially that film. Mm. It's it's the one where Rambo goes to Vietnam and kills, kills all, all, all the Vietnamese people. Perhaps even even you know part three, which is which, which was Rambo against the Red Army, but like it, it was perhaps too too humorous already, you know, to be the the same ball game with with Sisu. So I would say part two especially. The second thing that I was 
thinking very heavily when I was watching this was Quentin Tarantino. Mm. This is really Tarantino-esque movie. Kill Bill. To a point where this one also has the chapter titles, like Tarantino <laughs> likes to use. So there, there's a lot of like Tarantino-esque filmography. Well, Tarantino leans heavily into into ex- exploitation movies and into into old 80s Italian movies, spaghetti westerns. So yeah, you you do have also like like in those those really really breathtaking wide shots of 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 a Nazi commander just standing on top of his tank or the landscape lone man running through it. You also have a lot of like Ennio Morricone. Mm. Yeah, I I meant I meant Sergio Leone, mm. Sergio Leone, and other like like spaghetti western directors. So I I would say that in a lot of ways, like yeah, you are correct. At the moment, American eighties esque action cinema, it's kind of popping up all over the place. But and in in that sense, yeah, yeah, the the kind of the spark of enthusiasm here can be said it's it's from the global cinema because everybody's doing this type of stuff at the moment. But I I still like once again when I was looking for a refer- reference point when watching the series, C- C- I, I was also thinking about you know eighties American action, mm. something like Rambo two, and I and like I said also Quentin Tarantino and Spaghetti Westerns. I was listening to one of the interviews that the director did and he he was opening up a bit about his idea with the titles in the film uh chapter 1 chapter 2 and so forth and I actually this didn't occur to me they were put there as a kind of a way to to set the tone for this film including the kind of map in the beginning because otherwise the audience might view the film as too serious that they might not really, you know, you you have to set a, a certain uh, vibe so the audiences will understand what kind of stuff they're dealing with. I can understand if you don't have those. Yeah, it might come off as a bit too seriously toned, at least in the first few minutes. Second, I would actually say that this might be actually one of the most serious films Hellander has made. Mm. It still is, like, don't get me wrong, it is fun, bloody action times, yes. If this is a fun movie, I had a fun time watching it. But when it comes to, to Helander's own filmography, I do think that this is perhaps the, the simplistic he has been, especially when it comes to his, his features. Like Rare Exports, for example, in my opinion, it, it had more elements. It, it was deeper and also more intelligent movie than Sisu was. And then again, when it comes to the humorous aspects, I also actually thought that Sisu was surprisingly serious. Throughout. That's actually one of my gripes with the movie. I would have hoped that this would have been a bit more tongue in the cheek. Huh. I would have wanted a bit more, you know, exploding body parts. And you know, blood fountains there, and a bit more dark comedy than what we ended up getting. And I do think that, for example, like w- once again, you know, looking back at Helander's early short films, I I do think that they did have more humor in them than w- what Sisu has. Well, it, it's, Sisu is not not by all means. It's not an uber serious movie. It's it's not a deep movie. And it it doesn't aim to be, but I do think that it still is kind of, It's 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 more serious than what Helander has been in the past, and it's a dumber than what Helander has been in the past. Yeah, well, if you're looking for fully blown comedic tones, then if Rowney Mulberg had directed this film, he would have blown the fucking horse for realsies. <laughs> this this guy doesn't fuck around. That, that's that's actually something that I I paid a, a close attention when I, when I saw that the horse actually steps on my I was like looking at do we have a real horse do we have a real <laughs> no we didn't we have started to get you know obsessive about this aspect while talking about animal treatment in films in some episodes yeah but but 
Sisu does have it, it does have some some really humorous moments of violence. I would have hoped that there would have, would have been more of those, but I re- did really like the moments that we did have. There's that one moment where he he throws the the mine and it hits the Nazi in the head, and then there's the flying leg. In the minefield it sets off the of another mine. And my favorite favorite moment, most definitely in this or one of my favorite moments in this film is when he when Corby is submerged and the, the Nazis dive after him. Yeah. And he sneakily swims behind them, cuts their throats, and then like because you know he's holding his breath, he needs more air. Nazis have lungs full of air, and when he slits their throats, the air starts the air in the, the Nazi's lung starts to escape from their throats and just, Corby just, you know, breathes that. And that was like, hell yeah moment. Just, just like, also later in the film when they try to hang him and he stuck his bullet wound in that middle road and lift himself up to get a breather that way. And that was like, I, I was like, I, I was looking at those moments and I, I was like, quietly just chuckling inside my head and being like yeah this is the good stuff yeah this is what i signed up for and i was kind of hoping that we have gotten even more yeah of that type of material breathing air from the cutthroat of a nazi yeah not kissing the nazi but you know (laughs) slicing the throat yeah and and when i say that the I was surprised how inventive some of these action beats was. Those are where the kind of the moments that I definitely looked back on and was thinking like, yeah, that's that's a that's an inventive action moment. I also like the moment where he self immolates when, when they try to like they, they not just said the dog to attack him and he he has been doused in gasoline and then he lights the match and self immolates in order to to force the do- dog not attack him. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's 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 actually like that's a that's a good smart action making. More of this, please. Yeah, the the dog that reappears around the Nazis right after getting you know shot at several times. Interesting, but uh, there's a lot of weird moments like this. This movie doesn't care about reality in any way whatsoever. There are all these situations that are just left completely unexplained. Guy's being hanged, basically. He's been hanged for, for several hours, but he survives that. He is underwater for several minutes. He survives that. He is climbing on the airplane. The airplane crashes with him on it. He survives that. Yeah, the airplane is perhaps... Like, it, it leads into not a great fight, but okay final fight. But that, that fight, if more than anything, perhaps, that really was showing you the fortitude that the guy had in him. In him. The Sisu getting up time and time again. Yeah. But before that fight, I must admit, uh, Finland has kind of spotty record also when it comes to CGI. And, like, holy fuck, once again movie moments when he's when he's hanging outside of the plane from his pickaxe and he's working his way through the, the plane's hull <laughs> and <sighs> i i don't want to be too harsh on the film also that the multi 100 million dollar hollywood action blockbusters fuck up the cgi occasionally the final fight of for example black panther the big ticket Marvel movie also is a, has some really horrendous CGI. Sisu most definitely has actually better CGI than what, what Black Panther had in its final moments. But I do kind of think that that's also one of the things where where, where the like Black, Black Panther's abysmal CGI was somewhat saved by the fact that it was still dumb Marvel fantasy action movie which meant that the characters could be wearing oddly light, full Power Rangers costumes and all that fantasy stupidity. Kinda, it did ease off at least a bit 
the CGI that you were seeing. Sisu does not is not a fantasy movie and does not have Power Rangers costumes. So when you have the the plain CGI going on on a big screen, it's something that you just can't unsee. I remember looking at the the CGI plane and just trying to look at it and see if if they kind of messed it up, but. I came to the conclusion that, hey, this is actually maybe some of the better CGI that I've seen in Finnish movies, but hey-ho, didn't pay so much attention perhaps to the scene where he, you know, is pushed by the air to the back that, part. That moment, that scene, that precisely that scene is is the moment where it hits you the hardest. <laughs> okay. You can, you can feel, feel the breeze of the green screen on your skin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we find out that it was actually a real plane that we, he was hanging on. <laughs> nah. Well, I, I, I do think fin- Finnish action movies perhaps should do some of that Tom Cruise dumbfounded <laughs> stupidity. Yeah, not not Sisu, just stupidity. <laughs> okay. But entertaining stupidity. E- entertaining stupidity. But yeah, I, I wouldn't say that Tom Cruise shows Sisu. It's just stupidity. <laughs> All right, would it be the quickies? Well, yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, Performance-wise, anything that really took it home here? Uh, well, I, well, o- of course, you know, Jorma Tommila as, as Atomi Korpi kind of goes without saying. Sells it really well. Also, Axel Henie, really good as as the devious main Nazi. Yeah, I will. Actually, pick Alex Henie. He he brought something to the role. He he brought kind of the <laughs> thinking Nazi. Somebody with it was a Nazi with character. Definitely saw points there. What worked? Um, it's actually a really good action movie. Action does work in Sisu. Perhaps the best that I've seen in Finnish action movies yet. Some of some of it definitely is entertaining. It really pushes the whole Sisu thing to like absurdity levels. And I've heard from some audience members that it might be actually alienating the audience when the guy survives a plane crash or, or hacks his way into a plane. But I have to admit that it, it was also very entertaining to watch. Well, what didn't work? The ladies. That's my biggest gripe with the film. Isn't and that like female empowerment uh, one of the best moments? Girls get it done. Also against Nazis during the the, the 40s. I, I mentioned that my... That Helander's statement that this was supposed to be an ode to Finnish man kind of led into a heap of problems for me. Or not, not heap of problems, but it led me noticing some aspects that I found problematic in, in the film. And this one, once again, fully clo- goes into that that statement because, god damn, it's so bloody obvious that the, the, the women have absolutely no role in this film. None whatsoever. They ain't characters. They have nothing to do in in this film except to be captives. Except then at the very end you get the girls get it done moment. Which I kind of get that, you know, you, you want to get, you know, that the, the social war, culture war, progressiveness points for your film. But once again, Helander, honestly, it was supposed to be an ode to a Finnish man, and here you are pushing out and having the girls get it done moment just just to have it. Just to just to balance it out. No one can say anything just bad. To, just to balance it out, because uh, I don't know, we, like, like where was, was Helander too afraid to make a rocket ode to a Finnish man action movie and not have... Maybe. The female empowerment scene in it, and that's the problem. Really, is is not like, like you know you can you can have women doing action stuff in your action movie by all means, but this was so blatantly just like this one. This is not fooling anyone. 
this is here solely to, you know, get you some, some social credit. To get the progressiveness points. To say that, yeah, girls, get it done, also in my movie. The, there's been some phrases, some things that have rubbed me the wrong way about Helander's interviews. Like, maybe I'm a completely off mark here, but he, he was commenting on someone acting in some way or something like that. And he, he described that way, like he was crying like a girl or... and. Who, who says that anymore? So when this was marketed as the kind of the ode for the Finnish man, then I wasn't sure what to expect. But he's kind of protecting himself with this female as empowerment moment, I, I would suppose. Maybe I'm reading way too much here. Uh, that, that's, that's how it smells like. Yeah. Because it comes out of bloody nowhere and most definitely wouldn't need to be here. It comes from nowhere, it goes to nowhere, it does nothing, and it just, just is there. The whole f squad of women just, just is there. Mm. And they also, you know, god damn, we, if they, if something, if they do something in this film, they rob us from one more good and bloody Nazi killing. Okay. Because Corby has to save that you know, let that one Nazi Nazi leave so that you know he can hand 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 him over to the to the female squad who then does jack shit with him. So you know, yeah, thanks for that also. Okay, for me the whole female moment wasn't anything really. It was pretty quick and over and done with. But I understand your gripes. What didn't work for me? Well. Like we're this this is like an eighties action Hollywood film, like you kinda of said. Or heavily inspired by those. A one man army badass. It's a it's a Rambo character essentially, but then we also have these other films like the supernatural horror film with psychic connection to the monster with the easiest in your face symbolism. Perhaps I'm just a very hard guy to please when it comes to Finnish films, but I do prefer the kind of pre-90s Finnish films. That's not to say that we don't make great films also now, every now and then, but but after 90s it became kind of an attempt to do as internationally appealing movies as possible. I understand it perfectly from, from like a, a money-making standpoint, I understand it perfectly from like a ego standpoint, which is not a bad thing it, in, in and of itself understandable but uninspiring for me any one word description for sisu um uh, my word is fun it's a fun movie most definitely my word way may come as pretty negative but not necessarily my intention you could actually combine these two words my word is dumb and yours is fun so it's dumb fun for me and that's Precisely what this film is. Yeah, yeah. Nothing more, nothing less. Will this film survive the test of time? I, I don't, I don't know. I no comment. I, it will survive the test of time in Finland. When it comes to international advice, I do think that this film does have a solid chance, and I do think that you know Sisu deserves to to survive the test of time on a global international market. The problem that kinda exists is a business problem. We, we Finns kinda, we wanna believe that a Finnish movie is a Finnish movie out there in the big world. A Finnish actor would be a Finnish actor out there in the big world, like the, the Finnish aspect would mean something. Something in the competition against all the other cinema that exists on the international market. And unfortunately, as far as I've understood from the business angle, that actually is not how it goes. Finnish movies get lumped into... With, with Norway and Sweden, it's gonna be like Nordic movies. Finnish actors out there in Hollywood are not Finnish actors, they are Nordic actors. And for Sisu, it means that this is not going to be like... Like, America is not gonna go and see this as, as a Finnish action movie. 
They, they say that they will, but at the end of a day in, in the production meetings, this is going to be a Nordic action movie. And that will pit this against, you know, or, or, the, or the Hamiltons and whatever exists out there. Perhaps. Sisu does have a chance against that crowd, but it's going to be a tougher competition. Maybe a few benefits here for Sisu. Well, it's using the Finnish word Sisu, and and the kind of the Finnish aspect in the marketing will be strongly emphasized. I think there's a chance now that this is such of a big film. It seems that the Finnish film would be, you know, kind of separated from the overall, overall Nordic uh, classification. Well, well, hopefully. And it, it is a better action movie that I've seen, you know, Swedes put out. Mm. So in, in mm. that sense also, you know, I, I do, honestly, I do hope that Sisu makes it international-wise. Yeah, and... I would like to see this film having an international legacy also. Really cool of the, all these international uh, actors also joining the project from from Norway and uh, where's this one guy from from GB Great Britain I yeah. believe so yeah cool 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 stuff you really know you're watching Sisu when when a film comes to you and asks hey man would you like to drown this Nazi on his own piece and you reply sorry I couldn't hear you I was busy drowning this Nazi on his own piece <laughs> uh huh you, you really know you're watching Sisu when the director finally gets to blow up that asshole horse that he's been hating on for the entire filming project. With CGI, but anyways. I, I heard that there were some impossible moments with that asshole horse, I believe he was known. Uh, Im- impossible to film a shot with a horse and a dog in the same frame walking because the horse wanted to kick that dog to death. <laughs> <laughs> Horses are kind of assholes. <laughs> yeah. And then on one occasion, the horses ran away with all the stuff he was carrying, and it was thrown all over the wilderness, and they found the horse 11 kilometers away. So yeah, did you like the film? I most definitely did like the film. I know I've been harsh towards this movie in our discussion, but it still does not not hide the fact that I I do think, do like... Helander as a director, even though I'm not always blown away by his films. I do have some gripes with the movie, but it still is... is solid good fun. Yeah, would it be the kind of film that you would show to your, you know, foreign friends? This is a Finnish film, maybe you should check it out. Uh, for me, yeah. Yeah, it, it would. And it's also also a movie that I, I do recommend people seeing. Yeah. It, it's not a bad movie, and it's not, like... Yeah, 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 in our discussion, perhaps we painted it out to be, like, like super problematic, but it really is not. Like, we are, we are to, we, we, we were, you know, grasping, like, you know, small things here and there, which, you know, uh, deserved to be criticized, and which did go strongly against, you know, the director's expressed intention of making an ode to a Finnish man, etc, etc, etc. But still, it's it's not like, it's not a super problematic movie, it's not a bad movie, it's it's a, it's a really good film. It could have been better, in my opinion. And I don't think that this is a movie that, like, we, we kind of, we in Finland, we hope that Sisu will be the movie that finally cracks the action movie code. Now we find a way how to make action movies. And I do think that Sisu finds one answer to that code. Like, I do think that Sisu finds one way how Finns can make good action movies. I don't think this is the only way. I don't think this is the only template that we can use. I do think that there was also another way to, for Finns to make, make action. I do think that we have also before also succeeded in making good action films. Those... Those have been in the, the amateur Finnish underground scene. But I do think that there are some shining diamonds also in there. And and stemming from that experience, I do think that we still have more ways than just the way that Sisu shows us how to make action in Finland. But Sisu does give us one template. 
In my opinion, it does pave one road how Finnish action movies can finally become a thing. And I therefore, I, I wholeheartedly, I hope, I pray that this film is a, is a success. And I do hope that, that you know, Finnish cinema takes no, notes from Sisu. Because I, I, I would want to see more. More good Finnish action movies. And Finnish action movies all together. So, you know, from my end, thank you, Jalmari Helander. Thank you, Sisu. <clears throat> that there's a lot of viewing points you could take here. and it, It's art. It's a way of looking at things, I, I'd say, very much in the case of this film. I took the way of looking at this film as a kind of a trope fest full of cliches. However, I did very much appreciate the fact that it's happening kind of in a maybe a new and fresh environment for the viewer. It it brings sometimes interesting challenges for the main character. You know, you're always in this lapland, in this plain field, and you kind of cannot hide anywhere. But he manages to find the structures and things. And sometimes it's it's, it's actually yeah, it's inventive, it's fun, but overall. I was I was a bit bothered by the whole no story. It it just kept I don't know. It just kept bothering me. I felt that the f- film was a little bit empty f- for it. That there was nothing much than other than these these momentary action pieces where the guy is challenging the the Nazis. But hey, if that's if that's what 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 is your calling? If you want to see the things that you know, basically the Indiana Joneses already did nazis always a kind of a good challenger to bring into your films in iron sky we all already saw that in a, in a finnish film but in wider popular culture for example the indies so nazis is the bad guys that's one of the easiest ways to get people's cinematic attention if you're making an action action film i would say did i like the film moderately Sort of, kind of, yeah. It was kind of on-off throughout the film. And this brings me to would I recommend the film. Well, the interesting locales, the, 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 the setting. If I, if I wanted to show some aspects about, you know, <laughs> Finnish nature. I, I think we're not watching this film for Finnish nature, goddammit. But I might... I might we m- could, because the cinematography is really good. Well, yeah. It is. And perhaps I could show this to a couple of people regardless, and I think they would enjoy that. Actually, I used these words when I was discussing this with, with my boyfriend, that uh, this film, I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I probably should have, but I think you would enjoy it way more than I did by the virtue that you, if that's a virtue, <laughs> that you haven't seen as many films as I have. But then again, you as a, as a film junkie as well, you just saw it in a different light that, hey, it's dumb fun. It's all good. And it's well made. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I fully agree with you. It's, it's a trope fest. And it's an intentional trope fest. <laughs> yeah. And for, for me, it just wasn't a problem. Just in the same way as, as you know, the film... It is em- an empty movie. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's a it's an action set piece. It's it's the action trope after one. And that's uh, after another. And that's that's kind of what you are getting. That's the ride you are stepping into. And for me, that just wasn't a problem here. It may be that, you know, I too, like, like Helander, I, I watched... Rampo 2 and, and Chuck Norris's missing action films and, and all that, you know, action chunk from the 80s. And I, so, so I kind of perhaps have, I, I don't know if it's, if it's nostalgia or what it is. I may have a soft spot out that shows up occasionally for, you know, your empty, tropey, simplistic, dumb action fun. And that may be why, like you know, why my experience with Sisu was different from yours. Maybe something that helps to 
understand Helander. And that, that this is actually coming from the heart. I respect that. This project, I can, I can tell. Quote, from Finland, Helander spoke to us over Zoom with posters for Rare Exports and Rambo First Blood hanging over his head and wearing a Patagonia jacket. So that that's kind of the thing that's going on. And if I would yeah. have to wrap this up, my thoughts on this, it's somewhat quite entertaining, if not so original, and means to do, even do that at the same time, God damn it! Very conspicuously inspired by Hollywood, like so much of Finnish cinema, perhaps with the difference that the, the film kind of acknowledges that, that what it is, it's kind of an ode, ode to whatever. And at first, the kind of the traits and the style, it, it first felt at a, a little bit desperate. But maybe I was just taking it a little bit the wrong way, what this film wants to do. And the Lapland setting helps the proceedings here. In the end... Quite a lot, yeah. I would recommend it for certain people, but I didn't warm up to this film very much. So, kind of left dangling in between. Kind of lukewarm recommendation and uh, possible lack of recommendation. Depending on your mileage or your mood or what you want from your action <laughs> or your film. This film, as an experience, it's very much dependent on taste buds. Yeah, it's, it's not for necessary for everyone. Yeah, but dear listener... If you have access to Amazon, if you have access to Finnish cinemas, maybe even your local cinema, there might be, you know, runs of this film. I heard that in, in Boston, uh, our old friend Zachary has informed us that it's indeed playing in the US somewhere at times. So maybe go see it and tell us all about it. Yeah, and thanks also to, to Onni Tommilo. Who has finally, you know, grown up and crossed into adulthood, which I guess is the main motivation for Yalmari Helander finally get up or get out from the at the end kid saves the day narrative, which we had in rare exports and also in big game. Yeah, so so you know, th- thank you only. Let's never, never, never get back into kid saves the day narratives. I did notice that that he is in those. Kid saves the day narratives, and then in Sisu he just gets shot. And that's kind of end of his arc. Kid didn't save the narrative in Sisu. <laughs> Alright, any thoughts? Still lingering? Not anymore. I, I think I've, I've said all that I have to say about Sisu, at least at least for the time being. And I guess that, you know, when the episode airs, we have said enough to once again burn a couple of preachers. To cost enormous amount of gripe for, for <laughs> Finnish listeners. And perhaps, you know, just enough to get your passport to Finland revoked. <laughs> Finnish film has been doing pretty great recently. Is there any other Finnish film that we should watch? I really did like, and I, I mentioned this one in, in our catch-up episode, The Girl Picture. Mm. Also known as Tytöt, Tytöt, Tytöt in Finland. And also Finnish horror is is trying to make a comeback or break through something like... Pahan hautoja. Second, second or fourth time with, with the hatching. Mm. Also known as Pahan hautoja. So perhaps someday check out some, some Finnish horror. I don't know, perhaps to check out what has been before in Finnish horror fi- field and also what's going on today with hatching. We also have, like, oh my god, hey, Finnish horror, yeah, that really is is coming up and about. We don't only have hatching, but we also have knocking, Koputus, which just finished its theatrical run in Finland. And we also have, have the the twin, Paha Kaksonen, which was released, made for American streaming services. So, you know, uh, hey, uh, Finnish Horror has managed to have uh, at least two, depending on your co- way of count, 
perhaps even three, four, because there's that Pudum movie that came out a few years ago. So quite a lot of Finnish horror has been happening during the past year. All right, well, if you think this content was valuable, you can rate us on Apple Podcasts, or better yet, you can share this episode with a friend of yours who might also be interested. Or better yet, send us a nickel and dime via our Patreon page, or we could actually start setting up some kind of a Bitcoin or Monero money channels. (laughs) 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 Maybe we can start to sell NFTs. (laughs) <laughs> I've heard yeah. they are they are doing well at the moment. Uh, like a digital drawing of Henrik by me. Hey, there's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a it, 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 it's a it's a one-time collector's item. It's bound <laughs> to be valuable. <laughs> but thank you for joining us, and please do it again the next time. See you later. Oh, until then. Maailman miehen matkamies, mä olen matkamies.